everybody. This week I thought I would talk a little bit about breeding angelfish. There really is no wrong way to go about it. The hard part is figuring out the right way for you because there is no magic formula. There's not a one way fits all type thing. I have personally have tried many methods that other breeders use. Some work for me, some don't. So again, you just got to play around with it. But if you want to focus on working towards parent raising, there are some tips and tricks that you need to be aware of. Number one, the ideal situation is the parents are in their own tank. This particular tank had a few in them and um, of the orange koi and three of them decided to pair off together and do a spawn and they guarded them ferociously guarded them. This pair of double dark blacks decided, nah, it was overrated, so they decided to eat their eggs instead. Again, that is the risk you run when you want to try and work on parent raising fish. Um, once the angels spawn, it takes about 48 hours for the eggs to hatch, and when that happens, the parents move them all over the tank to the plants, to the glass, to the breeding slate, to a breeding cone, to a leaf, back to the glass. I mean, they can move them several times a day. And that's part of, I assume, what happens in nature, not keeping them in the same place too long to stop from being eaten by other predators. But once they get it right, a week after they've spawned, those wigglers will start to free swim. And it's kind of fun watching that happen at first because the parents kind of get freaked out trying to keep all the kids corralled. And after a day or two of that, they kind of wear themselves out and then they just let them free swim. And at that point, you're still not out of the water because sometimes something could happen in the room. Uh, for example, I've had people come over and want to see my fish room, which I am more than welcome to share with people. But when I have new pairs that are just getting the hang of parent raising and a new person walks into the room, even if they stay far away from the tank, that change is enough for them to freak out and the next day all the fry are been eaten. So again, you just never ever know. And if you don't want to worry about parent raising fry, you can pull the breeding cone, the slate, whatever they've put the eggs on to, and you can raise them. Here's showing an example of them free swimming inside of a jar. I put the slate cone in the jar and change out the water as need be. And after they have been free swimming for a day, then I'll feed them for the first time. Because they need time to eat up that egg sac when they first start swimming. And after I know they're eating well, then I will move them out and put them into a holding tank. I start off with a small tank, a 5 or even a 10 gallon tank, for a new free swimming spawn. And the reason for that is you have to do daily water changes. You have to clean the bottom up. You have to suck out any of the fry that have died. They, not all of them will survive. You just, it's just the luck of the draw on how strong and healthy they happen to be. And if they've got internal problems, they might die two or three days after free swimming. Um, you, again, you just never know, but you have to be prepared daily to deal with it. And once you have the fry free swimming, then of course you have to worry about what are you going to feed them, how are you going to care for them, culling, all that nasty kind of stuff people don't like dealing with. But anyway, I hope this general introduction, you found it informational and useful. If you enjoyed this video, please like and share it. If you would like to see more like this, please subscribe. I post a new video every Sunday night, or I try to at least. And I thank you so much for watching. Catch you next week. Bye.